Today is the balloon days and we woke up 3 a.m. in the morning. Flight starts at the morning with the sunrise. This is gonna be one of the first days that the flights will be allowed again. Welcome to Cappadocia, welcome to Air Cappadocia Balloon. Our flights are not flight, about an hour. Now, departure time. As you can see, most of the balloons just departed. Lift off. wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning because my pickup time was 3.40. The guys are collecting everyone from the hotels and they take them to the operation center. They give us a little breakfast. So after one hour from pickup, we started going to departure area. So departure area is a huge area where everyone puts their balloons and then you are waiting for your time to depart. Basically, there are two different departures, one early departures and after 30 minutes, the other balloons are also departing because here is the busiest balloon traffic in the world. Almost 200 balloons lift off. This is a very congested airspace. People put some buffer in between by altitude and the distances. As we all know that you cannot steer the balloon left and right. You cannot point somewhere. So you are relying on the wind itself. We departed first. The flight took almost 40 minutes. Normally, you should be able to fly one hour. That's how they advertise. But don't forget, aviation is all about the safety. Now landing time. We are gonna land in this platform. Nokta atışı iniyorsunuz valla abi ha. Bizim pist de bu. Hop. Landing. Now we landed actually, the car pushes us and when he pulled these, the red rope on top of the balloon, the parachute is just, you know, open and the air will just go away and then you can see that finally, the final stage. So we are on the ground and as you can see, we are going with the car. It was very precise landing. Yeah. As you can see, hot air is just leaving the balloon. And since hot air is leaving the balloon, the parachute site is just coming down. So this is the final stage. Approximately, it takes 20 minutes fly, just with one cylinder. But it also depends how cold the weather is. But normally in the winter time, they can consume 
two cylinders for the flight in the winter time. So basically flight didn't take that long because it's all about safety when they find a safe spot to land. Uh, depending on the wind today, it was a little bit windy, so the balloon was always moving left and right. So for them, it was harder to find a nice landing spot. So that's why they just cut it short. That was really great, you know. The, this company has a couple of balloons. The one that I was in for 28 people, and there was one bigger one. This one over here is for 32. That's really nice. It was awesome experience. We climb up to like maybe 1600 meters, so it's like around 5,000 feet. Not bad, not bad at all. I had lots of questions to balloon pilots because, you know, I didn't know their rules, how they're, you know, studying, how is training. I asked really, we talked a lot, but unfortunately, it's very difficult to record everything. It was really noisy. First balloon flight, Mongolia Brothers. 1783 years old. Safe flight, safe landing. Thank you for guide. Champagne party ceremony. Every time. Thank you, Grand Guru. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want a shower? No, no. Okay, ready? One, two, two half, three. I want to show you my flight certificate. Yeah, this is my second balloon flight and I got a flight certificate. So basically now I have two and a half hours balloon flight most probably because this is my second flight. Yeah, apart from almost 5,000 flying jet hours, I have two hours balloon flying. I talked with the pilots and I got really, really, really interesting information. They in general fly 200 to 250 flight hours per year because Per day they are flying one hour, but it can be plus minus 15 minutes. As we all know, there is no string in balloon, you just go up and down. And therefore, they are always in search to find a safe plot, spot to land. And the ground guys, they are just following them on the ground because each balloon has unique design, as you can see. So for the drivers, it's very easy to follow them. Where are they going? So they are just deciding a landing spot based on the wind. And each factor today, for instance, wind was not, you know, calm. So it was going really fast. I mean, of course, not comparable with the airplane, but it was going really fast. Therefore, we had to cut it short to land in a safe spot. I want to show you something. As you can see the basket there, they literally land on this platform to the basket. So when they reach on the ground, they just stay on the you know level, but not land. So basically the ground crew, they all come together, grab the balloon and make the final adjustment to just adjust the basket to land on this platform. But of course, not all the time you can make this because of the wind. So you have different kinds of landing and there's no break in the balloon too. So literally, once you land, you can drift towards the left and right. Here he was our balloon pilot. I have YouTube video var da. Video da sizi de göstereyim dedi. And this is our balloon pilot, Hi. yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to be on YouTube. Yeah, okay. <laughs> After the balloon tour, now it's time for horse riding. We are going to have sunset horse riding. It was raining a little bit at the beginning of the, you know, evening. I thought that we are, cannot make it, but the weather is good right now. We are going to have almost two hours sunset riding and we'll see the fairy chimneys and we will be seeing nice, you know, landscape with the beautiful horses over here. I don't know which one we, are we going to get. Bu, bunları mı alacağız abi? Bir tanesi bu, bir tanesi de beyaz olan. Yeah, we are going to get this... Bu, dişi değil mi? Dişi. This lady and... This lady as well. So I didn't know if they're a boy or girl. So you know, two ladies. Yeah, I'm super excited about it. Now we will get ready, and we will start our tour. So it's gonna be only two of us. Really great. It's like a private tour. That's really great. Let's continue.
And my horse name is, her name is Gülendur. And the other horse name is Kader. So they're really expensive horses. Since the horses know their names, this is really good. When they call the their names, they're responding to the honest. It's really awesome. I just asked, do you have any boys? Because all of them are girls. And they said that, no, we don't keep here because they're dangerous. So basically they said that there are more than 500 horses in this region, only 10 boys. The others are girls. And I said that, but what happens if, if a horse just deliver a boy, they're selling those horses. We gave a break and I'm just patting this beautiful creature over here. Oh, look at this, Ooh, my beauty. She's so beautiful and you know, very friendly. Yes, thank you so much for accepting me for today. I will show my love towards the Kader, but the problem is <laughs> she will immediately eat it. Let's try. Kader? Kader, is that Mikas? Ay, 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 ay. This kind of love. I wanted to give her flower, <laughs> chamomile, but of course she took as a food. Hello from the last day. Now I'm again in the tour. Now today we are just in the red tour. Red tour is all about more domestic, locally Cappadocia tour. So we will be seeing more local stuff, better museum, fairy chimneys and better shapes. I promise you that. I am in the house. Yeah, this is a private property actually, guys. This private property can be seen by any person who is willing to pay 20 Turkish euros, which is nothing. Those are abandoned houses basically, because in 1960s, 70s, government forced everyone to move out because these places are not safe to live. And on top of that, because of the electricity, heating system, they need to carve. And of course, these things damage whole millions of years of histories and everything. Therefore, people have been forced to move out, but the good thing is they kept their land. Whoever owned this land still owned this place, but they can use it. And you can see that it's very basic life inside. Super nice, super nice. I am in Göreme Open Air Museum. This is a very important place for Christianity. If you are into a Christian history, you should visit here. This museum is all about a missionary school from 11th century. All these little church that you can see, you can see the drawings from literally 11th century. So like these are like 1000 years old. When you visit them, you could clearly see that as if they're drawn yesterday. They're so clear and unfortunately we cannot record anything inside. It's not allowed, it's forbidden, but 
I would definitely recommend you to come here and say, all this facility where you can see right now was a missionary school from 11th century. Basically, these students were coming here, learned the Christianity. They had a duty to spread out the Christianity all around the Anatolia and even furthermore. And those churches, chapels, are literally 1700 years old. It looks like a cave, but don't forget, it's 1700 years of Christianity, you know, story is there. But the formation of these rocks goes to thousands of thousands of thousands of years ago. <laughs> The way that they constructed the missionary school was like there were two churches and then one dining area. Right now we are in the dining area and you can see people just carved the stones like rocks, rock formations to create a perfect table and seating area. You can count how many people can sit around this table. So there was a dining area and there was also resting area as well. So basically, as I told, there were like a couple of churches, two maybe, and then one dining area and they keep constructing the entire facility like this. It's also very unique and great that you can see like 2,000 years old table. Wow, I would love to eat one day my dinner or lunch there. Now we are in Imagination Valley. All these rocks for millions of years are formed. I would like to show you some rock formation so you can join me if these rocks looks like something else or not. All right, I'll start from there. Do you see a camel there? I think I see a camel here. Just over there, do you see the reptiles? The just head is down, turn a little bit. This is the reptile that I can see. Mushrooms over here. The mushrooms. There are two ducks over there. They're kissing each other. And the one over there is like Napoleon Bonaparte. <laughs> he is speaking Turkish, he is speaking Turkish, he trained them and literally she follows whatever he says. He said turn around and just align themselves and make the heads touch. I cannot believe I've never seen any trained horse in my life before. Kübra is six years old and Büşra. They are together for six years. He's training them for four years. You can always come here and ride it. He's ordering Kübra to go to Büş next to Büşra. Align. Align. Turn right. Touch yourself and pause. Wow. Really nice. Such a great thing. I never had in my life. If you ever visit Cappadocia, come here, come here, Cappadocia. you can always come here. And where we are right now, where is Abi? Hayal Vadisi. Hayal Vadisi. In English, Imagination Valley. If you join the Red Tour, you will be having a stop here. So you can always come here.
sadly we are coming to end of my Cappadocia vacation. This is gonna be the last stop. We are in now Mushroom Valley. So this is the Pashaba region. And as you can see, I would like to see the mushroom rock formation over there. So those are really, really interesting formation with the, as I told you many times, the combination of wind, rain, water, heating up, expanding, shrinking, and then continuous process of doing this for over millions of years, then you get this kind of formation. As you can see over there, this dude is just getting thinner and thinner when erosion takes everything completely up, then finally the mushroom head will just fall down. The one over there with three mushroom heads covered, we cannot approach them because it's in danger right now. It can fall down anytime and the cracks are there, especially after the winter time, when you are approaching the springtime, these cracks are getting worse and worse because during springtime it's heated up. So that's why now they start expanding because during winter time they got shrunk. And that's why once started expanding, they get lots of cracks and that affects the mushrooms and then Okay, Mushroom Valley was the last stop for us. And as you can see, it's a great scenery here. The rock formations here is unbelievably, you know, natural. I love it so much. And that's the end of the travel vlog. And that's the end of the red tour. In five hours, we have a plane to Izmir. Then I will stay here another two, three days. Then I will head back to US. That was an amazing vacation for me. I hope you enjoyed it. Now it's your turn. As usual, please don't forget to subscribe my channel, like my videos and hit the bell button to get the notifications. See you in the another travel vlog. Bye bye. <laughs>